beautiful woman is tapping her fingers against her cheek. Thought she liked the criminal in the courtroom. But look closely, and you'll see. Her fingers are tapping in a regular pattern. It turns out the prisoner is her boyfriend. Jack. Lisa talks to him through a Morse code message, asking Jack how she can help him break out of prison. Jack can only respond to Lisa by blinking his eyes, passing Morse code in response to Lisa. Lisa rushes to write down her boyfriend's plan. That's when the judge finally handed down. Jack was sentenced to death and was executed the next day. Lisa didn't let up for a second. Following the information provided by Jack, find a particular road sign. Just as the car approached, the stone door slowly opened. Lisa enters Jack's secret base, entering the code Jack gave her, opening a safe. Inside were different colored potions. Lisa takes a yellow and a a green potion. Then Lisa dressed up and went. She came to the office of the Deputy Minister of Justice, seeing the beautiful woman's surprise visit. The lustful Deputy Minister's heart began to waver. Lisa's seductive and sensual eyes. The Deputy Minister is smitten. To get Lisa, the Deputy Minister promised to give her anything she wanted. Lisa sensed that she had a chance, grabbing a newspaper off the table, pointing to today's headline. She said, Can you let me see tomorrow's death row inmate? The Deputy Minister was shocked to hear this. That's a very dangerous criminal. That seemed like a crazy request. But for Lisa's sake, the Deputy Minister took a risk and agreed. The next day Lisa came to the prison with the deputy minister. She entered the room with the deputy minister. Lisa got to see her boyfriend as she had hoped. Just as the guards closed the door to the room, Lisa quickly took out the green potion. She gave the deputy minister a shot. The deputy minister collapsed on the floor. Lisa took out the key and unlocked her boyfriend's handcuffs. At the same time, the potion took effect. It's a potion that makes people tell the truth. The deputy minister lay on the floor and said, where the money he'd embezzled over the years was kept. It was in a bank vault somewhere. Lisa then injected her with a yellow potion. It's a drug that makes you look dazed. Lisa took out the mask she'd prepared. They switched identities, and so Lisa and Jack made it out of the prison. By the next day, the deputy minister disguised as a prisoner with a mask was sent to the guillotine. That's when the sheriff sensed something was wrong, remembering that at Jack's house, he had seen many face masks in Jack's house. Now he finally understood. He stopped the execution, but it was too late. On the other hand, Jack disguised himself as a deputy director. He entered his office, entering the code to open the safe, gets the key to the vault, return to the secret base, discuss with Lisa how to steal the deputy director's property, in the bank's man's special drill for burglarizing bank vaults. This electric drill can easily solve the problem of bank walls. The drill spins at high speed, very easy to cut through a 2 m thick concrete wall. The cut concrete wall, it can be pulled out with a little force. A metal mesh is sandwiched between the thick wall and the vault. Whenever something touches the mesh, the alarm will go off. The police will be on the scene within 5 minutes. The vault security system is very tight, and the entire interior of the vault is cast in a tempered cylinder. It's like an airtight square box. Not even bacteria can get in. So how do you cut through the thick layer of steel? The thick layer of steel inside? Jack had an idea. She had Lisa put on a mask and disguise herself as a rich woman, using the excuse that she was storing paintings, and put the two boxes containing the paintings into the bank vault. In fact a laser cutter was concealed inside the boxes. Two laser beams were shot at the safe and spun back and forth, and instantly melted the steel. Jack pulls out a thin tube, very carefully, through the metal mesh, dripping the corrosive solution onto the metal lock. Then he opens the underground water pipe. A huge amount of water gushes out. Jack puts on his diving suit, waiting 10 minutes. The vault will be filled with water. As the water soaks through the metal mesh an alarm is set off. The two guards wake up with a start, immediately turning on the CCTV. They see that the water is in the vault. They guessed it was probably a leak in the pipes, thinking there was nothing serious going on. Turned off the alarm for now. Then they called the bank president and notified the fire brigade. The fire marshal's initial analysis. The inside of the vault was sealed. If we opened the vault door, it wouldn't be long before. The whole bank would also be flooded. The damage would be even greater. We'll wait for the president to arrive before making a decision. Soon the water level will reach the distribution box, short-circuiting the monitors. The monitors can't see what's going on inside. On the other side Jack cuts through the metal mesh. Inside the vault. Find the vice minister's safe. Open the safe. Take out the treasure the deputy minister has stored in the vault. At this point the sheriff follows the trail to the bank. Although the vault door could not be opened. The sheriff had arranged for officers to stand guard at the mouth of a nearby manhole. He felt sure that Jack would come out of one of the manholes. At this point Lisa was driving to meet Jack. But she was stopped by the police. One of the officers recognized her. Lisa pulls a concealed weapon and knocks the policeman out. Then she arrived at the agreed place. But there were two policemen guarding the place. Lisa had to use the concealed weapon again. Jack climbs out of the sewer. The pair eventually escaped in a small boat.